When you think of Japan, two main brands come to mind when it comes to beer. That's Sapporo and Asahi. And these beers are pretty much everywhere, including some places like the 7-Eleven. And when I first searched at the 7-Eleven near my hotel in Tokyo, I could only find one beer that was labeled craft beer in this can, which is a nicer version of Asahi and Sapporo, being very light and easy to drink. Upon exploring more, what I discovered in Japan was that craft beer can be hyper-local depending on where you are. Let's take these beers, for example, which I found in a 7-Eleven, but this one was in Hakone. This was below the normal beers in the fridge section and had four different styles, including a red ale, a pale ale, another type of red ale, and a pilsner. So if you're looking for craft beer in Japan, always keep your eye out, and when you see it, buy it. Now, before we dive into the craft beer I had, let's talk about Asahi for just a quick second, and more specifically, one of the coolest places you can actually have it on tap. If you take the subway to Asakusa Station and walk towards a giant beer glass shaped building, you can actually take the elevator all the way to the top for free. And there you can have your choice of four different Asahi beers on tap. I did this at night and got a very nice view of Tokyo Skytree that was just in the distance behind my beer. Now, let's get into the reason why you most likely clicked on this video. I'm talking about craft beer in Japan. The first place I wanted to try beer from was Omnipolo, which is a brewery that's based out of Sweden. And this is their second location in the world and it's a tap room that's in Tokyo. This tap room is about 10 to 15 minute walk from Tokyo Station, and going down a side street, you'll find a neon sign outside with their signature smiley face logo in a Japanese style building. Now, it's time to head inside and see what they have on tap. Once inside, I could see that there was about 11 beers on tap, and there was a couple that caught my eye when first glancing at it. Then looking around, there had some many different cans and bottles of Omnipolo that were available to take home and purchase. And these were right below a board with some random snacks that you could order, but we didn't get any snacks at the time. Now being Monday evening, we had pretty much the whole place to ourselves, but this tap room was pretty small and there seemed to be about seating for 10 to 15 people. And I do apologize for the dark lighting as the mood lighting inside of this tap room wasn't great for shooting videos, but nonetheless, the first beer I ordered was Bianca, a pecan coconut blueberry made cake beer. And unknown to me when ordering it, this beer actually came as a beer slushy, which is awesome because one of the things I know about Omnipolo is their beer slushies. The head on top reminded me of Dole Whip. Overall, this beer met my expectations and then some. I don't know how to specifically ask for to have a beer and a slushy, but if you go here, try and get one of their slushy beers because it's definitely worth it. Now, the bartender only filled this glass, but he did definitely leave some behind, which I could see after my drink was served to me, still inside the slushy machine. After finishing my beer, I turned their attention to their stouts, and the one that really caught my eye was this 13.9% ABV Gorge. This was a double barrel-aged vanilla coffee brownie imperial stout. I later asked if there was any for takeaway, and the bartender said that this is the only keg in all of Japan, so it makes it really rare. This beer was rich and so good, and words are hard to describe it, but for me, on a lighter scale, this beer belongs in the S tier. The last thing I did was check out their bottles and cans before leaving, and I picked up one which I'll taste in a future video, as I bought it here and brought it back stateside. Now it's time to say goodbye to Omnipolo and check out some other beer that was actually brewed in Japan. And following Omnipolo, the brewery that I want to check out next was Hitachino Nest Beer, which we had after eating some tasty ramen inside the bottom floor of Tokyo Station. And I found this by going outside, up the second floor of an escalator, to find this taste room that was there. And it's not their actual brewery location. They do have multiple locations throughout the city and throughout Japan, so if you want to try and find this for yourself, be free to check out any other locations because all the same beers on tap. Once looking inside, they had seven different beers on tap, and for me, I really like their owl that sat on top of their beer tap. After looking at the menu, I chose to get this nitro espresso stout, which actually was available to go in a plastic cup, so I took the beer and walked down a little bit ways to find a seat and look out over the night sky in the open air. I'm always drawn towards nitro beers, but to be honest, this wasn't my favorite beer I had from them. The other beer that I ordered and I got from them was this Yuzu Lager, which is very drinkable and really crushable and had a nice citrusy flavor. So I highly recommend this one over the Espresso Stout. Now, moving across the city and getting off at Shinjuku Station and walking about 10 to 15 minutes, I went to YYG Brewery and Beer Kitchen. This brewery is one of the reasons why I love Tokyo, because you can turn down a random street in an alley and find a hidden gem like this brewery. The brewery side of the operation was on the first floor, and on the seventh floor was their restaurant, which I did go up but didn't film because it was just filled with people inside, nothing special. Once inside the brewery, this was the first one that I went to where I could actually see the brewing equipment in the background next to where the beer is being served. Now looking over the beers on this list, I was very happy with my choice of visiting this brewery as it had a wide range of beers in different styles and using ingredients that were special to Japan. I will note that the menu was both in English and in Japanese, making it easy for me to decide what to order. So for me, I ordered two beers to start and included the 
Ko Matsuna and Coriander Ale, and the Endless Summer Mango. This Coriander Ale had a unique flavor, and for being a spice beer, it was pretty well balanced with the malt. The Mango Fruit IPA was refreshing with a nice mango flavor and had really nice juicy hops to balance it all out. For the second round, I ordered Madame Butterfly, which is a dark saison with lavender, which I've never had before, and the Creamy Nuts, a nitro brown ale that also had hazelnuts added to the fermentation. Trying the saison, one of the things you can be worried about with lavender, it can be overpowering or almost like potpourri-esque, but the saison yeast definitely helped add a nice spicy character to balance it out, and it wasn't overpowering in this case. Now, the Creamy Nuts was one of my favorites we had here. The hazelnuts really balance out nicely with the brown ale, and serving on nitro definitely helps add to that creamy body. If you're looking for a craft brewery inside Tokyo, I highly recommend checking out YYG Brewery and Kitchen. Now, moving away from Tokyo and several days later from the first ones I talked about, I took a bullet train from Tokyo down to Kyoto and visited the first brewery in Kyoto, and that was Spring Valley Brewery. This brewery is located on a street perpendicular to Nishi Market, which I'll talk about in a future video talking about their food that I had there. From the outside, this brewery is much bigger than the other three I visited in Tokyo, which makes sense. So it was time to go inside and order some beers. After being seated, I could see a wall with various taps and looking over the menu, they only had six beers listed. From those six beers, two beers really called to me and that was the Daydream, which is a white beer brewed with yuzu and pepper. And the second one is this Jazzberry, a beer brewed with raspberry juice and fermented with wine yeast. Both of the beers are pretty mild, but very drinkable. Looking around this place, I found several medals from the beers that they had won in different competitions. And then on the other side, there was a whole wall of their bottled beer that you could get to go. That was the exact same of what was on tap. I didn't film this because the lighting was kind of poor, but there was a small outdoor patio, and there's also a second hole floor, which was additional seating for the brewery. Also on the first floor, just to the left as you walk in, there's a whole brewing setup, and it was much larger than YYG's, which kind of matched the size of the brewery that we were in. The next day, and the last brewery we checked out in Kyoto, was Kyoto's Beer Lab, which is about a five minute walk from Shi Chi Jo Station. This brewery was down a side street that followed a stream, and inside there was room for about 15 to 20 people. Once sitting down at the bar, they had eight unique beers on tap, and the first one I ordered was a hazed and refused Vermont Double IPA, or Hazy IPA if you're more familiar with that style, and this was brewed with CTZ, Mosaic, Simcoe, and Idaho 7. This is a really great IPA. I was really scratching that hoppy itch I was feeling because I hadn't had an IPA in a while. After finishing that beer, I ordered the roasted tea stout, as this was a combo that I've never really heard or had before. Instead of the roastiness you typically associate with coffee, it had a nice subtle but distinct bitterness definitely coming from the tea. And if you get a chance to try it, or any other beers with tea in it, I highly recommend ordering it. Now looking around inside, this is a quite compact brewery, and directly behind the eight taps was the brew kettles, and in the distance you can see the fermenters, which are kind of hard to see on camera. On the wall to the left of where we were sitting was a whole bunch of beers that they previously brewed, including some collaborations that were available in cans to go. There's some pretty cool artwork as their logo included a rabbit, a monkey, and a frog, as well as a listing of what was in the fermenter and was going to be on tap soon. Also above the kitchen area, there was a chalkboard with what was on tap currently with some really nice artwork, and then right next to that from floor to ceiling was a nice mural of like hops and barley and stuff. So now that wraps up all the breweries I actually visited on this trip that were on draft, but I found a whole variety of cans and bottles along the way. Now the first place I found craft beer was actually in Shinjuku Station, which is specifically inside the JR Station, as there's multiple stations at Shinjuku. The only way I can describe this is to take any train to get there and then follow the signs for the Narita Express then descend down to the platform, come back up on the other side, and you'll find some shop, little shops and then one of those corners, I found this stall, which had the biggest selection of craft beer I actually found on the whole trip. From their selection, I picked up two beers from Far Yeast Brewing, and they actually turned out to be some of my favorites of the trip, and I wish I had gotten to go to Far Yeast Brewing, even though it was a little bit outside Tokyo. The first one was this Ume Kin Mi Crazy, a barrel-aged plum strong ale that had a nice barrel character and really nice fruitiness from the Ume, or plum. The second beer was this Apple Pie Hazy IPA, which drew me in because I'm pretty much a sucker for anything with fruit beers in them. And this one really did taste like apple pie. It had a nice cinnamon spice and a sweet finish. And I highly recommend this and any of the other stuff from Far Yeast Brewing if you can get a chance. The next beer I picked up, I found while exploring Shibuya area. And the only way I can describe where this one is is it's in the same building as the Pokemon store and Nintendo store, just on one of the lower levels as those two are up on the 7th or 8th floor. Again, I was drawn to the fruit on this one and got picked up this pineapple beer and because of the photo on the front of the can. It did have a nice pineapple character, so that was a plus, and this was a, just a random find along the way. 
At the end of the trip, we traveled from Kyoto to Hakone because this is where we could take a boat across the lake to a gondola to be able to see Mount Fuji for the first time, besides just passing in a bullet train, which I'll talk about Hakone in a whole separate video. But from here, when we took the gondola up to the top and then back down over the sulfur vents, we got a wonderful view of the gore side of Hakone. But this is something very special to Japan that I wanted to highlight if you're looking for stuff. A lot of gift shops have items that are hyper local to the surrounding area. So here I was able to find six beers from Gore Brewery and Grill. And in this little refrigerator, they had a red, a white, and a couple different IPAs. So after looking over the choice of there, I picked the Rising Sun IPA and took this bottle back with us to enjoy at our Ryokan and have it with our dinner. To me, this IPA really reminded me of Sierra Nevada. It was nice and piney from the hops and had a crisp, dry, malty body. And I realized that I had to trek over a lake and a mountain to get to this. But if you day trip from Tokyo to Hakone, just look how far this brewery as the actual brewery is in Gora. Now, the last bottle from the trip was this Yuzu beer I found in the gift shop at a Ryokan we stayed out just outside Kyoto for one night. I picked this up as we left and went to Hakone, and this beer was a special brew that was specifically brewed for the onsen at this brewery, which I think is pretty cool. And it was light and citrusy, and I don't think you can get it anywhere else besides the gift shop at that hotel we stayed at. Now, I realize this isn't a complete list of all the craft breweries inside of Japan. And there are two breweries that were still on my list, but I just didn't get time to go to. The first one was Kyoto Brewing Co. And I didn't get to go there because it was only open on Friday through Sunday, which just didn't overlap with the days we were in Kyoto. And the second one was in Osaka, which is a Don Torbori beer named after that area. But instead of spending two full days in Osaka, we actually spent the morning going to Nara and the, sec and the second half of the day going to Osaka and chose instead for the second day to go back to Osaka but specifically visit Universal Studios Japan. So if you made it all the way into this video, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy any of this type of stuff, please subscribe so you miss out on future videos. I'll see you again soon.